Hello, everyone. Welcome to Unlocking Greatness Podcast with Zenja Glass. Feel free to call me Z. I've been gone for a while. I'm so glad to be back. Uh, I'm going to jump right into a very important subject matter. I think I'm going to call this podcast episode, Are You Planning to Fail? Are you planning to fail? And the reason I want to talk about this is because, uh, of course, who plans to fail, right? I don't think we always realize the importance of counting the cost before we do something. You know, uh, I get on here and I motivate you all and I tell you guys to go forward, go after your dreams, go after what you want to do in life. But you guys don't see behind the scenes some of the things that's involved in my life and what I do uh, before I take on new adventures in my life. And I'm going through a phase even right now, especially as I'm about to roll out my book by the grace of God um, and um, create um, some type of mentorship. Uh, program, uh, whether it's uh, live webinars, I'm not sure exactly, I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to do it. But my point is that I'm getting at is that I'm counting the cost. I'm counting the cost. I'm spending some time counting the cost and looking at this from every angle. And of course, in prayer as well. But I'm looking at every angle to see, first of all, am I capable of doing this? Can I do this? What's going to be required? So, so many times we jump into things because we, we, we've gotten motivated, we've gotten inspired, but then we turn around and, and, and we wonder why a couple of weeks later or a couple of days later, you know, nothing materialized. So I want to hit you with a scripture first. Uh, and this passage is in the book of Luke. Well, it, well, it's in all the Gospels, but I'm choosing uh, Luke. Um, in Luke chapter 14, there's a really amazing passage in here um, uh, when Jesus was talking about the cost of being a disciple. So just to clarify, this whole passage, this whole, uh, I don't, I don't know, know if I should call it a parable or a story, but Jesus is telling it. But this whole segment is about if you're going to follow me, this is Jesus speaking, uh, he's saying you, you've got to put me first. You know, that that's kind of the whole uh, uh, what this entire thing is about. He's saying you got to love me more than, you know, I'm paraphrasing at this point, you know, your your father, your mother, your wife, your children, you know, even your own brothers that, that I've got to come first. So he's saying you need to consider the cost before you before you follow me. So the title of this is called The Cost of Being a Disciple, Luke chapter 14, starting in verse 25. I'm going to drop down to verse 28 because I love the examples that Jesus gave. So follow a second on here and listen to this. So again, he's talking about the cost of following him. But again, I think that we can always make the Bible relevant to our lives in other ways as well. So in verse 28, it says, suppose he says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to compete it? to complete it. For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him saying this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he's not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for um, terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Now, I've already talked about what the passage in and of itself is about, but now let, let's pull some gold from it to make it relevant to our lives. In these examples, he's basically saying you don't just run and do something without estimating to see what it's going to cost. Does that make sense? The, the very first example he gave is, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. You're not just going to start building it. You, you've got to sit down and, and, and see, he, he says here, will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? And, and he says, you know, for if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him. And I just love that example. And then he gives another example about a king about to go to war. He's going to sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose to one coming with 20,000. And, you know, he just goes on to say, because if he's not, he's going to send a delegation and basically try to settle this. So the, the, the goal that I pull from this is, oh, I'm supposed to count the cost. I'm supposed to count the cost and consider what it is I'm about to do. You know, I just got so motivated and, 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 and I feel I know what God wants me to do. But now let me sit down and plan like a king. Let, let me sit down and plan and know what am I getting myself into? What are the resources I'm going to need? So I'll use myself as a prime example. 
you know, first of all, I'm, I'm so grateful. Thank God that I was able to get away for a while. And, and, and that's why I haven't been recording in a while. I, I was away. I just honestly got away for almost a whole week just in prayer meditation. It's probably why you saw or heard some of those TikToks and YouTube shorts. You know, I, at some point I had a scarf on my head because I was just away in my time with God. But let me explain to you what I was doing. One, spending time in prayer meditation before him, getting away from everything. But two, counting the cost counting the cost. What is it going to take for me to go deeper in my walk with God? For me, part of counting the cost for me is I'm going to have to have some time alone and away from all of this and to be able to be in his presence. I'm going to need to reevaluate my life in order for me to go higher in, in my relationship with him. At least this is what I feel. I'm going to really need to be able to make sure that anything that's a part of me that doesn't smell like him has got to go. I've got to look at my my, 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 my sacrificial giving, you know, and I looked at everything from uh, um, uh, the money I, I give to organizations to the money I give to my church to whatever. I looked at all of my giving. Is it sacrificial? Uh, I looked at, am I fasting at all? When was the last time I fasted? You know, now you may say, well, Z, you're saying you got to give and you got to fast and you got to do all of this to get closer to God. No, you figure out whatever works for you. Keep in mind, I'm no one's minister. I read my Bible and I make my decisions on what God put in, puts in my heart to do. My point is that for me, counting the cost is, gosh, I got to make sure I get up in the mornings, even when I don't feel like it, like tomorrow, like this morning, get myself out on at least a good hour prayer walk and just being with him. I, I need to get away. I need to go deeper. I need to get rid of things in my life that doesn't smell like him. I need to evaluate my, 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 my fasting. I need to evaluate the way I give. Is there anything that I'm doing that's not done <clears throat> with integrity? Is there any spirit in me that's manipulative? You know, even with the services that I'm about to offer, what I'm about to introduce, God, is this what you want me to do? Then I look at, so that's that part. Now let's go from a business perspective. I want to switch gears with you a little bit. Before I roll out anything, I sit and I draw it out. I have dry erase walls in my office. I literally write all over the entire wall, right? And I draw out, and I did this the entire day yesterday uh, with my admin person, but I sit and literally draw out every single thing that I'm sort of visualizing what I feel God's given me. Then I sit back and I take a look at it, and I got to count the cost. Well, if I do that, what, is, what, 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 what services am I going to need? What support am I going to need? Can I really handle going live every week on a consistent basis to meet the needs of people? Can I really handle having some type of mentorship program or at least at this level in my life? What support would I need to do that? Is that what God even wants me to do right now? Do I really need to do this? You, you see what I'm saying? I literally look at everything. What is the cost of that? What equipment am I going to need? What type of services am I going to need? What type of calendar management am I going to need? Is this something that I can handle? God, what do you want me to do? All of those things. And I put, I've put hours and hours and days and days into God first and foremost. First and foremost, your name is to be glorified and honored. That's number one. Secondly, I'm going to remember is it Philippians 4, 6 that says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, I think it says, with prayer and petition, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, regards your hearts. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing because I, I, I didn't turn to it. But I think it's Philippians 4, 6. So I'm not, not allowing myself to be anxious about it just because there's such a big demand. Because I've, I've been getting a lot of messages from people. Z, you need to provide some sort of mentorship. Or Z, you know, when is the book coming out? We've been waiting forever. And sometimes I can let that sort of get me a little anxious and try to rush something. And uh-uh-uh-uh-uh. No, 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 no. I got to walk in step with what God wants me to do. And I've got to count the cost. I've got to count the cost. In fact, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I should have turned to it before I started this podcast, that talks about it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and not, you know, honor it. Does that make sense what I'm getting at? This is why I believe sometimes um, it's, it, it, we don't plan to do this, but we're, we're planning to fail by not sitting and counting the cost and looking at everything that's involved. You know, someone put a message up the other day on one of my social media channels, um, and I can't remember exactly how she said it, but she said something like, I start off with the right intentions, you know, and I'm, and I'm riled up and I'm ready to go and get this project off the ground or change this in my life or do whatever. And by the end of the day, she's like, I just feel like uh, she didn't use the word a failure, but she just was like, I just feel like I just nothing became of it. And I thought to myself, man, I've been there so many times in life, right? 
where we, we start something for a couple weeks or, or a couple months or in some t- cases a couple days and then it just fizzles out. So here's what I want to call you to. Number one, read that passage yourself. And again, I'm not taking a scripture out of context, just to be clear to all the biblical scholars out there. We, we know what the scripture is, is in relation to. But I also know that God is not limited. And I know that we need to be able to pull from the secrets the secrets in the passages and apply that, make that relevant to other areas of our lives and apply that to how we see life and how we do things. And there's a secret in here that I use in my own life and I'm now sharing with you. Count the cost. What is it gonna take? Some of you are making a decision that you're gonna follow Jesus Christ. Count that cost. What does that mean for you? Does that mean you're gonna need to be reading your Bible more, praying more, stop doing some things that you know grieve the Holy Spirit? I mean, that's for you to decide, but I'm just saying that's called counting the cost. Am I really gonna make him Lord of my life, right? Some of you, you know, it's, it's, it's anything from losing weight to developing healthy boundaries to starting your own business or to growing out a new platform or service, which is sort of a stage of where I'm at now. Count the costs. Part of counting the costs is examining kings. And what I mean by that, I've talked about this before, find people who's done what you're attempting to do and study and learn from them. Remember we talked about that? You know, the, the scriptures uh, um, tell us to, um, uh, what does it say? Be as shrewd as a serpent, but as innocent as a dove. Well, we can learn from people that are out there. Do, do you think that I'm not learning from others right now? And I'm looking at a number of them, seeing what they do, what I like, what I don't like, you know, what, what's going to work for me. Then I put it in, 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 in the presence of God and say, God, is this what you want me to do? And let me just tell you this. There's going to be some times of you may spend days uh, hours, days, or even weeks trying to develop and put a plan together. And you, you, you present it and put it before God. And he shows you this is not quite it. There's holes into this. And that's not a time to feel bad or discouraged. That's a time to continue counting the cost. You got to know what is it going to cost you to do what you're trying to do? Not only spiritually, we're, we're, we're not even talking just spiritually. What's the structure you need in place? So that when you do whatever you're going to do, you can do it with excellency. Excellency. Anyone who's in my space who knows me well know that I don't have to do anything. It's just not who I am. When I do something, we're going to go all in and we're going to do it with excellency. We're going to operate in truth, honesty, and integrity. That's what I live by. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. Do I mess up? All the dog on time. All the time. But if I'm going to set my sight to do something, even the release of my book, <clears throat> excuse me, by the grace of God, um, uh, that you guys are getting ready to start hearing because I'm going to start dropping some uh, reading from some of the chapters. But you'll know that anything that I do, I do my best to make sure it's done with excellency. And what you don't see is behind the scenes, I'm counting that cost. So whatever it is that you're setting your sights to do, could it be possible? I'm only asking the question. Could it be possible? is not quite gotten off the ground like it needs to be because you've not spent the time sitting back and counting the cost and planning accordingly. One of the things I told, um, I I asked my um, admin to help me with is we're looking at some um, brand new calendar apps uh, and deciding which one we're going to use because I want everything to be planned out and structured. And I want there to be a flow so that we know, are we on target for what what are the things we're trying to do? We know what are the tasks for the next week, the next month. You got to get yourself organized. This is some of the basic things you've got to get in place. You can't just wing things like how you used to do it. Okay, I pray you've been encouraged. Um, I can only share with you all what I go through. So I'm going through this in real time in my life right now, which is why I can speak so passionately about it, that I don't just, you know, run and jump in a swimming pool and hope I can start swimming. I sit back and count the cost. Then I take another look at it and then I go on a walk with, with God with it. And I say, is there any holes in here you see? Is this something that, 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 that I can handle at this stage in my life? And it ain't about, well, you just need to have faith and know that God is going to. I have faith. I have faith. But we're talking the basics of admin, organizational structure. What, what, what product are you trying to deliver or do? Does that make sense? Count the cost. Be wise and listen to the very words of Jesus Christ. As he gave the words, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, as he gave the words um, telling you to count the cost if you're considering being a disciple. Apply that to every area of your life. Sit down, take some time and count the costs and look at what is it going to take from you 
do you have the the energy, the resources, the knowledge, like every the, the, the correct systems and structure? What is it that you're trying to put together and do where you can over deliver on value? You get that? I love you all. I pray you're encouraged. I actually got to run to a meeting like right, right, right now. But I just wanted to record this really quickly. Thank you for your patience. I know I've been gone for a while. Um, There will be more times where I'm just recording from my cell phone like you've seen me do uh, lately. But when I'm out and about and and, and in my moment with God and and just trying to get away and have my meditation and prayer, that's just how I'm going to have to move forth. But anyway, I love you all. And um, I'll be making some announcements pretty soon about some other things. Love you guys. This is Z with, what is the name of this podcast? Unlocking Greatness Podcast with Zenja Glass. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness Podcast. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification button. Love you all. Bye-bye.